What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, yesterday was a big day for NVIDIA. As expected, they did unveil new video cards and even a pretty big feature that appears to be specific to this new generation that has caused some frustration online. We'll go over all of that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about NVIDIA with Nintendo as a chip that's been rumored for over a year now appears to be getting official support that has led to Quite a bit of speculation around, yes, new Nintendo Switch hardware. And we're also gonna be talking about EA and Marvel as they have now unveiled their next big game. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Xbox Game Pass games to close out the month of September. We'll head over here to news.xbox.com. Starting with Deathloop that is now available, that's Cloud, PC, and Xbox Series X and S. Hard Space Shipbreaker, that's Cloud and Xbox Series X and S. Moving up to September 22nd, Spider Heck, that's console and PC. Beacon Pines, Cloud, console and PC. Slime Rancher 2, that's through Game Preview, Cloud, PC, and Xbox Series X and S. Moving up to September 27th, we have Moon Scars, that's Cloud, console and PC. We have Grounded, this is the full release, it's been it's been in almost like game preview for a little while now, but this is 1.0 that is officially launching on September 27th. That's Cloud Console and PC. Moving to September 29th, we have Let's Build a Zoo, Cloud Console and PC. Valheim, that's through game preview, specifically on PC. And then moving to September 30th, we have Paw Patrol Grand Prix, Cloud Console and PC. I guess looking at this, the big one I would recommend is indeed Deathloop. It's a very good game. I enjoyed it last year when it released. So if you have not checked it out and you've been waiting for it to come to the Xbox, great chance to check it out here. And they also have an update that I guess is gonna fix my biggest complaint, which was the ending. In this case, it will be extended. They're gonna have new weapons, abilities, and even cross-play for like the matchmaking multiplayer uh, they have set up there. But overall, not a bad way to close out the month of September with Game Pass. Also, we do know that a couple of years ago, there was a, a pretty uh, a public and heavily speculated on exit for Sean Layden from PlayStation. Well, now we have an idea as to what's next for him, and we can see this post up over on Twitter where he says, looks like LinkedIn left the species wall and the news is here. Nevertheless, quick update to say I've joined Tencent as a strategic advisor and I'm excited to be working with them as interactive entertainment drives technology and innovation. So I'm, I'm curious about this move, uh, obviously a hire by Tencent and They've been investing quite heavily into the video game space in developers, publishers, and all of this, but seeing them bring Sean Layden on board makes me wonder if they have bigger aspirations, maybe getting to a position where they want to launch their own like legitimate system. Would they go that far? Would Tencent, who I guess that is invested in quite a few places right now, work to do something like that? I guess it's possible. They're doing like a streaming handheld thing and they're partnered with uh, what Logitech for that. So you never know. You can see that news pop up that Tencent is going to enter the console market and they partner with some sort of hardware manufacturer or something. But otherwise, I assume Sean Lay is gonna help form more partnerships and investment opportunities for Tencent. Oh, and as expected, it does appear that more PlayStation games are indeed going to PC. And this is all coming way of SteamDB, which we see games pop up under their code names. And now we're seeing, for example, you can see Sackboy, that being a big adventure, is confirmed to be listed as Steel PC on SteamDB, and mostly because you can see the icon that popped up here uh, that was shared on Twitter. There also are some achievements that are added in, so it seems like this could be announced at any point in time. And I mean, Sackboy could be announced during like a PlayStation experience, or realistically, it's not like a massive game or announcement. It could just be on Twitter or through PlayStation blog. Hey, Sackboy, go into PC and that's happening maybe before the end of this year, or maybe it's a way to kind of kick off next year. Although they still have to get Last of Us Part 1 over to PC and we're just now seeing Uncharted Legacy of Thieves head there next month. So it does seem like PlayStation is trying to rapid fire through some of these uh, releases on PC. So I'm expecting Sackboy to be announced at any time now. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this chip that appears to be getting actual support now. And it's the T239. We'd have to go back to, I think summer of 2021, where there were actual talks about this being the chip that 
Nvidia and Nintendo could be using in whatever's next for the Switch, whether it's a revision or next generation hardware. Or what, there's still a lot of speculation and talk about which way Nintendo is going to be going with it. And mostly, yes, it's it's a lot of guesswork as to how Nintendo wants to handle like the back half of this Switch generation, which we're coming up on the, the end of, right? I mean, we're about to be six years into this generation and you kind of expect there to be something after the Switch, right? This isn't going to be Nintendo's last system. But we can see this posted up. For example, this is over on WCCF Tech, and these are a lot of the headlines that were getting sent over to me. Nintendo Switch Pro successor rumored. NVIDIA Tegra T or 239 SoC confirmed to be real to feature eight core CPU. And you might be wondering, where is this coming from? Well, basically all the source links go back to this Reddit gaming leaks and rumors post, mostly because they seem to notice this uh, in an email over on linux.org. They say an NVIDIA employee has confirmed the existence of the Tegra 239 chip, which has been rumored since 2021 as being developed for the next generation Nintendo Switch. This comment can be accessed at linux.org. And you can see this page here where the big line that people are pointing out, adding support for Tegra 239 SoC, which has eight cores in a single cluster. Also moving num clusters to SoC data to avoid over allocating memory for four clusters always. At looking down, up and down this document, there's nothing here that says Nintendo or Switch or anything there. This all is going back to really the Tegra 239 being mentioned, I believe, by Copite like uh, over a year ago now. So this has been like summer 2021. I think that's the first instance because it would have been based on the Tegra 234 with there being some customization done, maybe to meet the needs of Nintendo or even NVIDIA. Now, the reason I say that is because the chips that have been used in the Switch were not just exclusive to that system. We've seen NVIDIA use it in, say, their Shield TV, and it's possible that this 239 could be used for something other than whatever Nintendo is coming up with next. We all assume it's going to be the Switch just more powerful, maybe some quality of life stuff thrown in there. Maybe it does touch 4K to be a bit more modern with TVs that are being sold consistently now. But it, I mean, it's it really is something to consider that we could see this being more or less used in NVIDIA's next Shield TV rather than this just being a gateway to Nintendo's next hardware. I do think that uh, Nintendo is at least coming up with the chip along with NVIDIA. And yeah, there is a good chance that this could be the basis of that chip, but it's also possible that NVIDIA uses this as it is now in their Shield TV. And then and Nintendo goes a bit further, customizing it slightly, where maybe they disable certain cores or do different things to the chip to, again, fit into certain parameters that they have. I mean, if you look at some of the notes that were taken from this document, it's an eight core CPU, likely to be the ARM Cortex a78 uh, that's ampere based gpu so you could see some lovelace features in there and of course it would be using dlss which is something we did see from that nintendo nvidia leak where we had like the api get out there that was referencing dlss 2.2 and even ray tracing support now i did check in with someone who might be a bit more knowledgeable when it comes to updates with something like a linux kernel that this has been added to giving it technically official support and after he got back from australia he was able to let me know that this is something that would typically go out if there was an update where certain parties would then be alerted through email this email by the way was dated september 5th at the top so it was a couple of weeks ago that this was updated and then people were alerted. So uh, it's hard to say if this is completely linked to the next Nintendo hardware as a lot of places are kind of running with now, but it is certainly something to keep an eye on because up until this point, the T239, while it was part of that NVIDIA leak, it didn't necessarily mean that it was gonna be added into uh, like official means and have maybe end user support. But now it's looking more and more likely that it will and people are gonna to start asking what exactly is going to be used for is it something like the shield tv or is it something like a switch pro or whatever nintendo wants to call their next generation hardware i guess we'll find out hopefully by next year as that would put us six years from the original launch of the switch 
you kind of expect Nintendo to at least start talking about what's up next. Next up, let's talk about Nvidia and their big keynote that they had yesterday, where they talked about all kinds of stuff. I mean, they talked about video cards, but they also talked about like the metaverse and they talked about self-driving cars and I'm sure stuff that many of you don't necessarily care about because a lot of us are wondering, okay, will these cards give us better frame rates? What kind of features do they have? And we'll just kind of talk about that mostly. But let's head over here. This was posted up by Tom's Hardware. It gives us a really good look at some of the cards that they announced here. So we have two different variations of the RTX 4080. And there's some talk around this and really what kind of variants there are here in terms of the differences because it appears to go a little further than just the, the video RAM on this. But the RTX 4080, we have a 12 gigabyte and a 16 gigabyte model. We don't have an exact release date on the 4080, just November is what they're saying currently. And it'll be priced at a total of $900 for the 12 gigabyte and then $1,200 for the 16 gigabyte card. So yeah, we, we are seeing a price increase across the board from the original release price of like the 3080 and the 3090. If we move up to the RTX 4090, we're seeing a price of $1,600. That one does have a firm release and it's actually coming out in a couple of weeks, October 12th. Now, Nvidia did their usual thing where they show us a bunch of marketing slides that basically designed to try to sell you on the card without giving you any exact reference points for certain game frame rates or any of that. Like we're going to have to wait for independent reviews, which is generally what I suggest for everyone before you start throwing around over a thousand dollars in some cases for video cards. But for example, there's a chart that they had that had no Y axis on it. And that's kind of what you'd expect when they're trying to sell you on something is to show this really cool line from ADA, which is what their new generational card or architecture is called. And then they compare it to some of the uh, the older ones like Turing and stuff. And they're like these lines all the way down there at the bottom. However, they did show off DLSS 3.0. And this was pretty impressive. And they once again had some images just trying to explain how it works to, to the best they can, right? But the biggest thing here is there is a legitimate performance jump over DLSS too, and they actually showed quite a bit of gameplay, just really showing a jump up to like 100 frames per second in games like Cyberpunk that when you have our, the ray tracing effect on and high settings and 4K, yeah, it would definitely hitch and stutter and have all kinds of frame rate issues, even with some of the strongest cards. So this is exciting stuff because the idea of DLSS is just to be able to make performance better for cards that maybe getting a, a little bit older. It seems like it'd be perfect for the 30 series, except DLSS 3.0 is specific for this new generation. Yeah, that's right. Only the 40 series will have access to it. And that caused a lot of frustration online. Now there are some pretty serious technical details around why that is, but most people online were just like, I don't, I don't get it. Like this, if you're someone who's who just picked up a 3090, ooh, especially when prices were really high there, you're probably pretty frustrated seeing this presentation now. And the only thing I can assume is they wanted to go further with DLSS 3.0 and also use it as a selling point to get you to the 40 series cards. But I will tell you this, we still need to see independent testing around these cards because while Nvidia is saying two, three, four times the performance of previous cards, Let's be real here, they're trying to sell you with all this marketing. If the performance isn't that massive in terms of a boost from the 30 series, and you're like, okay, I'm 1440p for my monitor, I'm looking for that 100 some odd frames per second experience, the 30 series cards like a 3080 is probably right up your alley and should be falling in price as more and more of these hit the market. So either way, there should be just more availability across the board, whether you wanna jump in with the 30 series, which I think is still a very competent line of cards, or you wanna go all out and grab that 4090. But yeah, the DLSS 3 situation, pretty frustrating when you consider the idea of like the deep learning super sampling, being able to raise frame rates for cards that maybe are getting a little older, but not the case here. It's gonna be used for the very expensive cards that are already pretty good overall. Oh, I did wanna point out one other thing. This is kinda neat and could lead to all kinds of 
uh, interesting revivals for classic games, the NVIDIA RTX Remix. It's a modding platform that will allow you to sort of create RTX remasters of classic games. Like they showed Portal with RTX on. They also showed like Morrowind, which is pretty cool. So that could be fun. You kind of tap the community of modders who can go in and touch up some of these older games for new experiences. So I'm curious to see what everyone wants to do and which games they gravitate towards doing these RTX settings for. Next up, let's talk about a new Marvel game that is being worked on by EA Motive. And this was kind of rumored before that we would see a new Iron Man game, but now it is official. We can see this posted up. They had this on social media as well as Video Games Chronicle covering the story here with a quotation from the Marvel Games Vice President, Creative Director, Bill Roseman, who says, we are thrilled to collaborate with the talented team at Motive Studio to bring their original vision of one of Marvel's most important, powerful, and beloved characters. They have a nice little card there that shows Iron Man. Now, EA Motive, they worked on Star Wars Squadrons and they're currently finishing up, at least I assume finishing up since it's coming out in, in like three or four months, Dead Space Remake, and then I guess they're on to Iron Man. It seems like this is something that's still a ways off, but I'm, I'm curious about this situation because let's say Dead Space does really well and they want to continue that. Will they then have to just expand EA Motive further? Can they handle both projects at the same time? I... Uh, interesting, but Iron Man makes a lot of sense for EA because while people, of course, did not really like Anthem, the one thing we all kind of looked at and said was good was the flying, like actually moving around. It was already compared to Iron Man, so maybe that's why Marvel reached out to them and they came up with this partnership because it kind of makes sense for them to make an Iron Man game with what they've already done. Now, EA does say that the Iron Man project is the first of several new games that are being created through a collaboration with Marvel. We heard through rumors about that Black Panther game. So it seems like Marvel is going all out here with EA being a big time partner, but Iron Man is one that actually makes sense here. So I'm curious to see what they come up with, but something tells me it's gonna be a while before we see any actual gameplay around this. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the MPD sales for the month of August. This covers video game sales in the US and we can see this from Matt Piscatel who had a very long thread on Twitter with a ton of details that'll be linked in the sources below. But first, let's talk about the hardware. We have the PlayStation 5. That was August best-selling hardware platform in both units and dollar sales. Remember, we'll hear about how the PS5 may be the highest dollar sales, but the Switch is the most units, and that's just because of the price disparity. But in this case, the PS5 is just a clean sweep across the board. And I mean, it makes sense because we are seeing more and more stock show up now for the PlayStation 5. And we know it's been supply constraint for a while, whereas the Switch, I just think Nintendo's running out of people to sell this system to. It's, it's over 110 million now, and I'm sure we'll find out it's even higher than that whenever Nintendo is able to report on those in, in the coming months. But at this point, the PS5, I'm sure will continue to be stocked as we go through the holiday, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's generally at the top of the sales starts now going forward. If we move over to the software for August, we can see number one was... Yeah, it was Madden NFL 23. There you go. And then, oh, Saints, Saints Row was number two. Wow, we're terrible. The US. Uh, Marvel's Spider-Man had a pretty big jump up to three, which I guess would come into play with the PlayStation being in stock. Well, it's an interesting jump, though, up the charts for Spider-Man. Elden Ring fell from two down to four. Then we have Multiverse. It's still sticking in there in the top five. Mario Kart 8 is... Okay, number six. Again, that would just be for physical sales because they don't count digital for Nintendo. Then we have Minecraft, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, and will be the show 22. And then Xenoblade Chronicles 3 hang in there in the top 10 again with just physical sales. Overall, the biggest thing to take away from the MPD sales is the PlayStation 5 stock continuing to increase, which is good news for people who are looking for one. I just noticed that they seem to always be in stock on that PlayStation Direct store, or mostly in stock. Like every time I check it's there and I haven't really had any problems just dropping one of the cart to test it. So if you're still looking for a PS5, keep an eye on that PlayStation Direct storefront. And really seeing Madden at the top, not too surprising with football starting up. It's still very popular here in the US, but Saints Row at two is, oof. I, hey, you know what? Maybe we'll get the next Saints Row with how it's sold because from what I've seen, at least opening 
week in like the UK it did well, and here it is in opening month in the US. So there you go. Hey, also good to see Xenoblade Chronicles 3 sticking it out there with just physical copies in the top 10. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. Or I ask, we're almost two years into the PS5 Xbox Series generation. How do you feel about ray tracing? So far, 11% say I turn on ray tracing modes for every game I can, it's great. 32% said I use it sometimes, but not if it really hurts performance. And then 57% said, I don't really care about ray tracing. I'm kind of in the camp of, I'll turn it on to see what it looks like and they go, oh cool. And then just go right back to the performance mode because that's kind of how I am with my games. I, I feel like a lot of games now look fine even in performance mode. I mean, it has to be really bad. I think Horizon Forbidden West had this weird issue with a lot of shimmering in performance mode. I still toughed it out there because it just, it ran so much better than the fidelity mode that felt like I was underwater playing that game. So they eventually had a patch that fixed up some of the shimmering, but I, for me, ray tracing, it's, it's fun to look at, but I'd rather have the extra frame rate if I can, especially if there's a performance mode, I'm turning that on nine times out of 10. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Michael saying, it hurts telling people they have 1,034 episodes or 1,060 chapters to catch up on, to on One Piece. It's worth it though. Yeah, I, I looked uh, at it on Crunchyroll and I saw it was over a thousand episodes. I was like, that, set, that seems like a really cool series to check out someday. Hey, a lot of you were saying in the comments, a lot of One Piece fans out there, by the way, that the game will be an original story. So maybe I'll start there. I'll play through it and see how I feel about the characters. And if I like the setting and the world, maybe I'll check out some of the anime on Crunchyroll. I saw it was all subtitled. I kind of would prefer it dubbed because I'll have the an episode on next to me while I'm playing a game. And with subtitled, I have to kind of keep looking over and reading. I, I know, the subtitle versus dub, most people go for subtitle, sure. But like in the sense of I can kind of have it on the background, a bit harder when I have to look over and read every line of dialogue. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Whether it is this T239 chip, do you think we have a look now at what NVIDIA and Nintendo are gonna use in the next Switch, or is this for that NVIDIA Shield TV? And then what about the RTX 4080 or 4090? Are you picking either of those up? And then EA and Iron Man, do you think they can pull this one off after what we saw with Anthem? Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.